on the flip side of that, companies that are engaged are 22% more profitable on average. So what you want to do is you create this compassionate work culture. You get people that are engaged. You get people that are working for you. You get, you know, your staff are, are your biggest fans, right? And and when that happens, guess what? It 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 works in dollars and cents too. It works. It work, It's a monetary thing. It's not woo woo. It's not like oh. And and this is what we're talking about here. Your whole this beautiful leadership summit, this new leadership summit. This is what your speakers have been uh, speaking about. Mark, Adi, Marcy. Um, they, this is what they're talking about. They're talking about this kind of elevated way of being, where it's not just this dog eat dog world. It's how we're all in this together. We are all in this together. And I think. If you understand that we're all in this together and you just make your your you know your table bigger for everybody to come sit at the table well all, all that's going to do is put more money on your bottom line it's going to make life easier for you don't have to retrain people you come up with better ideas people get to know their job really well and then they can improve on that position rather than people not really knowing the job and leaving and then you get somebody else who doesn't really know the job even less so um, I think compassion and turnover, high engagement, all those things, they're, they're all tied in. So, mm -hmm. I, I think on a, on a logical level, uh, leaders understand that and still they have a difficulty of applying um, any of these principles. And I'm wondering why, when, when they know about these facts, I mean, you, you read about them constantly, that the cost of hiring somebody are five times higher than the cost of uh, retaining somebody, right? Um, right. So, I, I agree. So the question I, is, when, when they know all of these things, that that it's all about inclusion, that you know employee engagement rises when you take care of your employees, why is it still happening? I'm just, you know, just, I'm not expecting an answer from you. I'm just wondering what is uh, happening that people don't realize that. Yet. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I think people are slowly learning, understanding it, but I think part of the problem is um, how you grew into your, your role. Right. So if you grew in, if you grew into your position and it was basically top down, right? So you were mm -hmm. whatever, I, I grew up in restaurants, right? So, right. you know, you'd be a, whatever, you'd be a server. And then, you know, one day you would be a, uh, a bartender, and if you did your job really, really well, then um, then all of a sudden the next step is uh, you know you're the manager, and then you just you're going to manage like oh this is the way I did it, so this is the next way to do it, and and if you if you just constantly just do always do what you always done, you always get what you always got, right? Mm -hmm. So I think there's a question. I think there's somebody, a comment, uh, yeah. Some companies look for um, turnover because they feel they need to bring new blood into the organization. And thank you, Anne Marie, for this question. Yeah. So and, I and that's about it the, too. Yeah. Go, Go ahead. ahead. No, I, I I remember very well um, when there was a reorganization in the company that I was working for. There was a takeover, so they they thought, okay, now we need new blood. Now we need to change everything, and that actually uh, brought a lot of pressure onto the existing uh, employees like they suddenly thought okay they need new blood I'm old blood I'm not so worthy anymore so there was the it was in the air I'm not appreciated you know the employees at the moment so I don't know if this brought any good to tell you the truth the bringing right. of new blood and, and yeah. you know what and, and and sometimes you know sometimes you know you allow that but again you're not taking 100% responsibility if your choice in the matter is just like, I'm not going to take care of my employees and hopefully they leave. Like, that's not a proactive way at all. That's not even a reactive way. That's just ignoring things. Yeah. Um, this this whole idea like of, of being a conscious leader, that these the things we're talking about today, the things this this whole program has been talking about, is is are things we learn in kindergarten. Be nice tell the truth, work hard, you know, these are like the most basic fundamentals of just being a good human being. And mm -hmm. somewhere along the way, and this is, this is, this is where it, it shifts. If, if we grew up and we still had that kind of childlike, you know, love for other people and idealism and everything else, then when people came into our organizations, they would see an organization that 
like we're built on these principles of trust and caring and compassion, um, but they're, they're not. And, and somewhere along the way, it's because as leaders, we have learned that, no, you've, you've got to be tough. No, don't show your personal life. No, don't, you know, there's this whole, don't be vulnerable. I've got to know all the answers. Don't be vulnerable. Um, but, but think about it. When, if, you get a, if you get a leader and you, you're working with someone and you're going into a meeting and you have a lot of respect and this guy's the boss and this woman's the boss or whatever, and you're, you're looking up and the very first thing they say to you is say, I got an issue. And when your boss says that, you know, your heart starts bumping, right? I got an issue <laughs> and you're thinking it's yourself. Well, as it turns out, they say, I got an issue and I don't know how to solve this problem. Not this big problem, whatever, marketing, COVID, whatever. All of a sudden it creates a space where somebody says, I'm important and I'm important. And this guy cares enough about me and thinks enough about me that they're going to approach me on this. And so this is, you know, this is part of the whole, you know, the, you know, the whole equation. We've just got to be better, you know, better people. So, and, and why don't we do it? Sometimes we know it. And this gets into my seventh, seventh thing. The seventh, seventh thing we have to do is, is, is improvement. It's Kaizen. The Japanese have a word for it, Kaizen. It's just improvement. It's just like trying to make things better all the time. And this goes back. All these things, if you want to improve all the time and you have compassion for other people and you have this presence that allow people to check in with you without having this ego, um, you're going to be able to make the very best goals and, and you're going to be living in this world where it's win-win. And, and guess what? You're the one who created 100% responsibility. That's those seven going backwards. And that's how it works. If you improve and you, you just become a better person, you've got to learn this stuff. It's not easy checking your ego, right? It's not easy being vulnerable. It's not easy acting like you don't know all the answers. Um, Back in um, May of 2001, I was a young, I had become, I was the youngest uh, general manager for a, a kind of exclusive uh, steakhouse restaurant company. And, um, the, and I, uh, I had had migraines. I started meditating. This is when I started meditating. And I it was on the board for the Tibetan Cultural Center in Bloomington, Indiana. And it was the center of the Dalai Lama's, it was the Dalai Lama's brother's center. And I was on the board there and the Dalai Lama happened to uh, come. And whenever he came, he would stop off, he would visit his brother. And then he'd give us uh, like a 20 minute pep talk, this, this small group of people that volunteered there or worked there. And um, at the time I had, you know, uh, my baby daughter, my, she was probably 18 months old, two years old and, you know, fussy nap time. You know, I was like, I get to meet the Dalai Lama. We're not taking a nap now, baby. We're, we're on our way, right? So there was this moment and I'll, I'll never forget it where I was really getting into meditation and I was like, well, you know, am I really going to be able to get into meditation is this this business guy, I'm a family guy, like, you know, should I be a monk? Like what, you know, I, I can't be a monk now. And I, I was lamenting the fact that I, that I couldn't like more explore more uh, in, in this Tibetan Buddhism with the Dalai Lama. And in this really passing very quick comment, all he said was, we don't need more monks. We need more good people in business. And that has always stuck with me. And that's why I'm here today talking to you. I, that's why I'm very passionate about your program you're putting on. And that's, that's my mission.